Mayweather, who fights Andre Berto on Saturday night, took an intravenous injection that was banned under WADA guidelines on the eve of his fight with Manny Pacquiao in May, according to a report. Although the substances were not banned by WADA, the fact that they were given intravenously was not allowed. USADA disputes this report. Skip, will this story have an impact on a potential rematch with Pacquiao? Stephen A., I believe it will, because Floyd Mayweather Jr. looks bad here. He looks laughably hypocritical. I believe he owes a healthy Manny Pacquiao a rematch. And I would love to see these two fighters make this deal and announce it six months before the fight so that Floyd Mayweather Jr. could be subjected to daily, 24-hour, real testing, Olympic-style drug testing that boxing has never undergone before. I want to see Floyd go through that for six months ahead of this fight. Skip, Floyd Mayweather is a pariah to a lot of people, and he's still worth nearly a billion dollars. I can assure you he ain't sweating it, especially if he finds out that Manny Pacquiao or someone from top rank had something to do with this information leaking out. He will never give them the satisfaction of a rematch if he finds out that they had something to do with this. Whether it's true or not, he won't do it. Okay. He, he will get shamed for that. He won't care. He'll be away from the game. He won't give a damn. All right. We shall see. Steelers Pats tonight. NFL is back. Thanks so much for hanging with us here on First Take. For Stephen A., Skip Bayless, I'm Molly Karam. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Today, the NFL season opens, but one man who can is Floyd, and we have to get into this story right away. Floyd Mayweather, who fights Andre Berto on Saturday night took an intravenous injection that was banned under world doping world excuse me anti-doping agency guidelines on the eve of his fight with Manny Pacquiao in May according to a report SB Nation said Mayweather's medical team told collection agents that IV of saline and vitamins was given to Mayweather for rehydration purposes following the weigh-in. Although the substances were not banned by WADA, the fact that they were given intravenously was not allowed. According to the report, such injections and infusions are banned because they can be used to dilute or mask the presence of another substance. Mayweather was not available for comment Wednesday night. Skip, your reaction. Stephen A. Smith, this story really, really makes me wonder about what your man Floyd Mayweather Jr. has been up to. Because we all know that Floyd Mayweather Jr. has been out front for the sport of boxing, trying to clean it up in the fight against steroids. And now I'm starting to wonder if all that was just an act, a lot of bluster, uh, a lot of sleight of hand deflection of blame, because maybe he was trying to deflect any scrutiny off himself, Floyd Mayweather Jr. And it seems extra hypocritical today because I remind you, as you well know, that Floyd and members of his camp publicly accused my man, Manny Pacquiao, of PED use. And my man, Manny, was so offended, he took them to court and he won. And I also remind you that my man, Manny, the night of that fight in Las Vegas, May the 2nd, was denied the, the ability to take a pain-killing injection in his torn rotator cuff because he had not submitted the day before the proper paperwork. So meanwhile, that day before, right after the weigh-in in Las Vegas, what happened, according to this report by Thomas Hauser and SB Nation? Floyd Mayweather Jr. went straight home and took an IV that is against the rules unless you're granted an exemption. By the way, that exemption was not granted by the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency for 18 more days. They did it in hindsight. In retrospect, they said, oh, well, we, we're going to say it's okay 18 days after the fight. And it wasn't until 20 days after the fight that the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency thought it might be a pretty good idea to inform the Nevada Athletic Commission that Floyd got this exemption for therapeutic use, this IV. Let me tell you what this IV reportedly had. It had 750 milliliters 
of whatever solution it was, saline and vitamins, doesn't matter what it was, saline solution. 750 milliliters went into Floyd's body, according to this report. The World Anti-Doping Agency that Molly referred to, the one I hang my hat on, the Olympic Testing Agency, says that the cutoff is 50 milliliters. Floyd went to 750 milliliters when only 50 are allowed for <coughs> Olympic-style testing. Why, as Molly pointed out? Because if you put 750 milliliters in your body, which according to the, the average weight of an average male would be about 16% of your, your blood system, you can mask whatever's in there. You can cover it up going into a big fight against Manny Pacquiao. It doesn't prove anything, but it smells to high, highest heaven. And this, this whole idea of Floyd saying that he's been Olympic tested this story just shoots holes all through that because the U.S. anti-doping agency is just this independent arm that operates in this country that you can pay to come and test you for your event. So its integrity has been challenged here. Its credibility is being challenged here because Floyd will call upon the U.S. anti-doping agency to come and test him closer and closer to fights because he's gotten smarter and smarter. Floyd doesn't announce his fights until very close to fight time. Andre Berto, we know, is tomorrow night, September 12th. That Floyd, uh, that fight didn't get announced until September, I'm sorry, August the 4th. So in four or five weeks, that's all the testing that the U.S. anti-doping agency is, is able to do. So what happened between the Manny fight and all the way up to August the 4th? Floyd could be doing anything. Olympic testing is 365 days a year, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Floyd has never been subjected to that kind of testing. And let me also add, before I hand off to you, Stephen A. Smith, I know this writer, Thomas Hauser. He is a dean of boxing writers. He's now 69 years of age. He wrote the definitive biography of Muhammad Ali that was published in 1991. You could say that he's favorable to Ali, and you could, you could read, I'm, I'm going to be objective here, you could read into it that maybe he has an axe to grind against Floyd because Floyd has been so publicly hard on Muhammad Ali. I don't know that. I don't believe that. I just know that Thomas Hauser has been around a long time. He's plugged in in boxing circles. He shares some of his other previous reporting about Floyd's whatever. I, I'm not even going to go into that because I'm going to stay right on this story right here, right now. It raises all kinds of red flags about what happened before that fight. And again, it proves nothing except it just comes across as so outrageously hypocritical after the way that Floyd has treated Manny Pacquiao. Well, your position is incredibly predictable. Um, my facial expressions turned very serious once you brought up Thomas Hauser because I want to echo your sentiments. He's highly respected, and regardless of what some may feel about him or whatever, he's been connected to the sport of boxing for quite a long time, quite a long time. He's highly reputable, and it's not my place, your place, nor anyone else's place in this profession to question the work of this man. So I just want to make sure Thank that you. I throw that out there I'm before we you. say anything else. I totally agree with you there. Having said all of that, I took the liberty of calling uh, Leonard Ellaby, the business manager and the CEO for Mayweather Promotions. Uh, approximately 30 minutes ago, I got off the phone with him. They're going to issue a press release uh, within the hour, I believe, uh, where they're categorically denying that there's any truth whatsoever to the reports. They're also going to remind the world that Floyd Money Mayweather has never, ever tested positive for, for, for drug use, banned substances, or anything of that ilk. They're categorically denying that there's any legitimacy whatsoever to this report. That's what they stand on. They stand on their history and their reputation of having a flawless record when it comes to PED use, intravenous, intravenous drugs, or whatever the case may be. We understand that. Having said all of that, Skip, let, allow me to shock you with what I'm about to say. I didn't find anything wrong with what you said. It doesn't matter how I feel because you know I believe that Floyd Mayweather is the best boxer pound for pound on the planet Earth right now. You know that I consider him a defensive genius. But there is no question 
that if there is any truth whatsoever to these reports, it smells. It smells. Especially when you consider the fact that Floyd Money Mayweather has been adamant, particularly when it comes to Manny Pacquiao, about being tested, about bringing USADA into the equation, about proclaiming time and time and time again, if you want the best, take the test. Uh, I'm not sure I, I quoted him uh, accurately verbatim, but it was something along those lines. And so when you hear about any kind of... Uh, of shady uh, behavior as it pertains to the allegations being levied against Floyd Money Mayweather, it definitely smells. It's definitely not a good look. And it, 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 it's incredibly appropriate that all of us get to the bottom of it. I will admit I find it a bit shaky that this information comes out the week of his fight with Berto, his self-proclaimed last fight of his career, literally a little bit more than 48 hours before he fights. Andre Berto and regardless of what we think about Andre Berto in terms of him being a joke he is 30 and 3 although he's 3 and 3 over his last six fights he does have about 23 knockouts on his career he does have some speed and some power and if he catches you he could take you out of there so we can't assume anything when I look at all of these things I do find it a tad bit odd that this report has come out now particularly considering the fact that this was probably known months ago. But that still doesn't absolve Mayweather from anything, if indeed it is true. They did acknowledge that he did take something because he was dehydrated, so he wanted to rehydrate himself. You pointed out how it's 750 milliliters, okay? 250 milliliters of the saline and the multivitamin, and then an additional 500 for the saline along with vitamin C, okay? Now, when you talk about potential PED use, let's be clear about something here. And this is where you and I definitely will part ways. There have been accusations made about Floyd Money Mayweather in the past, although that there was no there was no proof presented. I believe somebody associated with Max Boxing threw something out there about Floyd Money Mayweather working in concert with Golden Boy Promotions and them having, you know, connections with USADA and you know, brought that to the attention of the Nevada State Athletic Commission. I don't know how far that went, but clearly it didn't go far enough because we never heard anything really about it, okay? But let's be clear, Skip Bayless, the kind of PED use that, though, that, that, that many suspected Manny Pacquiao of doing with Floyd Money Mayweather, you yourself have said on many occasions, he's a pillow puncher. He's got 26 knockouts. The last real knockout of his career to you was in the late 90s, even though I count Ricky Hatton as a knockout, etc. You know, you kept pointing out how he's devoid of power and what have you. Do not equate Floyd Money Mayweather with Manny Pacquiao. You know, Claudi and Oscar De La Hoya, even though Ricky Hatton's got a glass jaw, did you know what he did to Ricky Hatton? I'm talking about Pacquiao here. What he did to Miguel Cotto, what he did to Antonio Margarito, what he was doing to Sugar Shane Mosley, even though that ended up being a decision when he dropped him in the third round. Manny Pacquiao not only was delivering knockout punches, Manny Pacquiao was also taking punches from much bigger and conceivably stronger individuals at the time that these suspicions about him were raised. I don't see any of that with Floyd Money Mayweather. We see a guy that's the same size. We see a guy that's devoid of the knockout power. We see a guy that's prepared to go 12 rounds each fight, etc., etc. So although I am willing to say to you that this does need to be investigated and it needs, we need to get to the bottom of this, and if indeed any of this is true, Floyd Money Mayweather does come across as a flaming hypocrite if there is truth to this report. I would ask you to keep in mind how they're categorically denying it, how Leonard Ellaby is scheduled to issue a press release, all right, for Mayweather Promotions, and last but not least, it doesn't compare to what we were seeing from Manny Pacquiao at the height of his stardom. When Ma what Manny Pacquiao was doing to cats while moving up in weight was absolutely unequivocally extraordinary. And it raised a whole lot of suspicions. You didn't see anything from Floyd Mayweather to raise suspicions. I would like to point that out. Okay. Back to your points in order. The timing of this sure. report 
is Tim Lee. At least Floyd's in the news right now. Isn't this the end of his career, potentially? I'm not buying that, but that's what he says. He is going to fight tomorrow night. Okay, so, so I don't have a problem with the timing of the report. I do have a small problem with what you're saying, and I agree with you about Pacquiao. He did seem to get a little stronger as he came up in weight, as he had to, and he was just destroying dudes on the way up. I'm with you on that. But remember this, and you know this about PED use, there are two sides to it. Increasing power, increasing recovery at advancing age. Floyd Mayweather Jr. Okay. is now 38 years of age. So I could see where at some point, I'm not, I don't know this for a fact, but you could resort to it for recovery from some of the beatings that you have taken. Because Floyd has taken some punish. I know he's the greatest defensive boxer ever, but he's taken some shots before. You've talked about him on this show. But I'm saying... Well, there He's, could be just recovery involved here. Well, Skip Bayless, he got hit by Sugar Shane Bosley in round rocked. two of their fight. Yeah, he got rocked by the at the end of the third round by Madonna in their fight. He did. What other beating has he taken? Okay, but I'm just saying these are I mean, shots he got, for he got, an, he got an aging hit. fighter to take. So, well, 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 work with me. Work with me. He got hit by a blow in two fights. One by Sugar Shane Mosley, the other against Marcos Madonna. At no other time has he been beat up in his career. Manny Pacquiao, I believe it or not, I've never had a, a, a problem with the power that Manny Pacquiao exhibited when he was moving up in weight. Even though others may have skipped, that wasn't my issue with Pacquiao. You know what my issue was? How he would literally invite you to punch him. Like, bring it on and literally yeah. take punches. Okay. And I said, whoa. Now right. that not, I mean, when you see the pythons on a guy like Clotty, when they fought at the at, at Jerry Jones' billion-dollar yeah, playbook. I know, I know. And I saw this guy take a play. Well, you okay. know, that's what but, I'm saying. But Stephen a, two or two different things. Manny Pacquiao was yeah. born with natural punching power that Floyd never has had. I agree. I'm sorry. It got, you could argue about enhanced, that's why I said but I'm not arguing punches. that. Okay. Now. I'm going to I close agree. this up by saying you ref uh, referred to the reports on Max Boxing back in uh, the website back in 2012. Yeah. A lot of those came from the same Thomas Hauser. I, I just encourage okay. our viewers, if you have a couple of minutes, because it's going to take a couple of minutes, go read Thomas Hauser's report on SB Nation right now because he goes into detail about all of his past investigations into Floyd's well, I'm, I'm going to leave it alone because I don't want to. I, I don't want to accuse Floyd yep. any more than the, what we did with this, this IV. Okay, but go read okay. it and and ju you know then you can make your own conclusions because he did have one hard evidence that he reported even again today, before the Guerrero fight, the the Mayweather Guerrero fight, Floyd did have a test that became public by USADA that was a red flag test. It's the the testosterone to epi testosterone levels. They were out of balance enough that, that trust me, the Olympic testers, WADA, the, the, the world anti-doping, they would have red flagged that one and said, wait a second, we got to retest here. So Thomas Hauser does have that. I'm, I'm just saying Floyd doesn't have a spotless record here. It doesn't look, I agree with that. It does not look spotless. He may have some, he may have some explaining to do, but I'm saying to you, he sort of de de deserves the benefit of the doubt from the perspective that in the ring, we've seen nothing different, whereas we saw something significantly different along the way with Manny Pacquiao. That's all I'm saying. All right. We'll leave it there. We'll continue.